Welcome back to Diving Into Watches, and we've got a really good review for you this week. In my opinion, it's a really good review. This is a watch that I've been waiting a long time to get my hands on, and I finally have my hands on it, and I absolutely love the watch. There are a couple things that, you know, are little pet peeves about it, and we'll talk about it on the bench, but uh, overall, love this watch. Um, it's a watch that's uh, uh, important to me uh, just because of the background of the watch company, people that started it, what it represents, etc., uh, the company of the, the name of the company is called Shan, Sanjin Instruments, and it, they specialize and make pretty much military style dive watches, military specific watches, um, watches designed and geared towards military service, police, fire, EMT, uh, and then the everyday average, you know, everyday person who's just ventures not going, but they're Main foothold, their main, I would say their main eyes is probably the military and, you know, military and then veteran, uh, veteran of these watches. They're fantastic watches. They are making their way into the military world and becoming very well known within the military ranks as a desired and wanted uh, unit uh, watch to be worn. Um, they make watches for everybody to purchase and then they make a line of watches that are specific to uh, EOD, Special Forces, Marine Force Recon. Uh, airborne and police and fire. And I think there's one other one. And in order to get one of those watches, uh, you have to submit to show that you either are current or former special forces, current or former airborne, current or former uh, police, fire, etc., uh, EOD, etc. And those watches are specifically made for those communities. And I had submitted my paperwork for the airborne one, which they call there's a pair overlord, obviously Operation Overlord, jump into Normandy. Pair of short prepare uh, parachute, and I had to submit paperwork. And what I submitted was my jump certificate from jump school, and then I submitted a bunch of my jump manifests. That the manifest just tells you who you jumped with, what you jumped on, what day you jumped, etc. And people jumped, you know, if it was for the foreign country, like when I jumped at the Italians, etc. I submitted that paperwork, and then you wait. And they do, they don't have a ton of watches ready to go. They do, they build them in allotments, and they build them in uh, sets, and then they'll drop certain ones. And they, I think they just drop the kinetic. Uh, another one in the, in the pair of Overlord, and then you hope that when you when they make that announcement that you can get on the website quick enough that you can get to watch. Um, that's how fast they go. They don't make them in huge instruments. The person uh, or the people who started the company are former um, uh, Marine Force Recon, actually MARSOC, uh, which is the Marine Corps Special Forces, and Sanjin. Uh, they took the name Sanjin uh, for the name of the company, and if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, let me know, but I believe that's how you pronounce it from Sanjin, Afghanistan, which is in Helmand province. Uh, for, the, for the Marines, it was probably one of the highest kinetic areas for the Marines in all of Afghanistan. And that Helmand province is predominantly where the Marines operated uh, in Afghanistan. I will put a map up showing you where uh, they were and then in relation to where I was uh, from the Marines in, in, down in Helmand when I was up in Uruguay province and the two bases that I operated uh, out of up there in Uruguay province during my last deployment. Uh, so this watch uh, is really, really cool because I, from my airborne background, that's how I got the pair Overlord. It was designed uh, to be a watch that had they been able to design a watch specifically for that operation, jumping into Normandy, what would that watch look like? How would, what would they use that watch? And this watch is exactly that watch. Perfect size, it's a GMT, it's a quartz Swiss Ronda. I would have preferred it to be an automatic, but that's just me. Um, but uh, no date, uh, any reflective coating, perfectly sized uh, uh, watch, 39 millimeter and it's water resistance to 200 meters. Fantastic, fantastic watch. It comes in two ways, it comes in DLC, and then it comes in, or you can get it in a bead blasted stainless steel case. I absolutely love it. I went with the DLC, which you'll see on the bench in a second. It comes with a Zulu Alpha strap, and it's a phenomenal, phenomenal strap, but I have it on a different strap from watches the espionage, and I'll tell you why I don't have it on a NATO strap when you get over the bench. But uh, definitely go to Sanjin Instruments, check out their watches. Tech, every one of them are really cool. It's really hard not to want them all, but I wanted this particular one. And this one will definitely stay in my collection and will never leave. And it will go on to be an inheritance to my son with my other watches uh, and all my military watches. So without further ado, let's jump over the bench and let's take a closer look at Sanjin Instruments Para Overlord GMT. Okay, here we are over on the bench. Um, I thought I'd just do an unboxing. I've been wearing this watch, but I thought I'd do an unboxing just so you can see what you get from Sanjin Instruments. Uh, and we will definitely be doing a loom shot on it. I won't be putting it on the time grapher because obviously it's a, it's a quartz watch. It's a Swiss Ronda, which is an excellent movement. 
uh, great things. But I'll show you what you get with the watch. Again, then we'll go over the dimensions, all the cool stuff, and then a couple little nitpicky gripes I have about it, but you know, that this is, and then uh, we'll wrap it up. So it comes in this really cool box, a uh, little uh, attachment up here. Uh, I think, you know, the box is nothing special. It's probably, you know, uh, made, I don't even know what it says here. Can't even see this, probably the website where you buy these. Um, but it's it's a it's a cool little watch carrying case. Um, I don't, this must have been spent time on a plane when it flew here, because when I got here, I, you know, I popped it open, I popped these two, and I could not get this case to open. It was so hermetically sealed. I had to get a little screwdriver here and pop it loose. But when you get it, it comes in this box. It's got a nice foam lining. You're going to have a little book uh, that's going to tell you about the being part of the tribe. Welcome to the Sanjin Instruments uh, with you. And then it's going to give you that they give you a timesheet to tell you uh, that it passed all the tests that it put it through, the pressure test and the uh, deformation. Uh, whatnot on the watch and then it gives you data tested etc this was tested to 200 meters and then it's going to give you the specifications uh, like it says like here what if members of the allied salt forces during world war ii designed the field watch what they wore into battle after 90 weeks of surveys designs and testing we came up with the overlord and then we'll go over the dimensions here in a second and it gets you just tells you how to set the gmt etc if you have a collar gmt this is exactly how it's going to set this is not a traveler gmt this is a collar gmt which it makes it very easy to set. So you get this cool little little pamphlet, like this little book, and on the back it's going to give you who assembled it, the date it was assembled, and then the serial number. And then it comes uh, it comes on this uh, Zulu Alpha strap with the Sinjin Instruments uh, logo, which I'll show you on this one here is a little arrow with the wing on it. And then uh, it is a NATO style uh, strap. Uh, I don't have it on. It's a really nice, super nice strap but I don't have it on a NATO strap. One, I'm not a huge fan of NATOs, and it's not because NATOs suck or anything like that. Um, I just don't like that how much material it is, but I have a very, very small wrist, six and a quarter. So when I do a NATO strap, it's just so much extra material. It, it just does. It just looks funny on me. My wife always tells me the first thing she does when she sees it with the NATO, take it off, put on a different strap. So it's not that I don't like the strap. It's just, I don't have a large enough strap to pull off the NATO, and it's just, I don't like a lot of material. They send you a couple extra spring bars uh, just in case. So I keep those in there. Okay. I had to mess with the zoom there. So I have this on a uh, watches of espionage hook and loop uh, uh, strap, or as like say in the civilian world, the uh, Velcro strap. Military loves acronyms or different names, renaming everything. They call it hook and loop because if you look, these are loops and then it hooks into this. So uh, at least in the army, they always called Velcro hook and loop. So it kind of just stuck with me after 21 years. But this is the Overlord. Uh, before I get into all the cool things about it, let me go ahead and cover the dimensions real quick so we can knock that out of the way. The watch is 316 stainless steel. I'm sorry, I said 39 millimeter. It is a 40 millimeter case width. It is a case length of 48 millimeters. It is a case thickness of 11 millimeters, which is very, very nice. And then it is a lug width of 20 millimeters. And then it has the crown at the three o'clock position. And it's a six millimeter screw down crown that is un, um, it does not have their logo on it. And then it is a sapphire crystal with an anti-reflective coating applied to the interior service. The, the uh, watch has super luminova on it and it is 200 meters water resistant. And the movement is a Ronda Power Tech caliber 515.24H, and as I said, it comes on a custom Zulu Alpha strap. Uh, so that is the dimensions and all the coolness of the watch. Uh, it wears extremely comfortable to that 45, uh, 48 millimeter uh, lug to lug. Um, you can get it in this DLC uh, black coating, which I did because I don't have, never had, I don't have a watch that has this coating on it. Or you can get it in the beaded stainless steel. You have the screw down crown. It is a screw down crown. You have uh, baton hands on it, and then you have the indices, you know, the applied indices on the watch. Nothing is printed on there except for the inner chapter where, you know, you have the 24-hour uh, uh, time zone for the GMT. Uh, it, it's all uh, Super Luminova, and then you have, you have Minitrack and then the 510s around it. And then you have an AR crystal, uh, Sapphire crystal. You can see it rides up a little above the case. The lettering is very, very legible. You have the GMT hand, which is uh, perfect. And then you have the Swiss movement. It is just an absolute perfect watch. You've got Sanjin down at the bottom. 
again, the legibility is phenomenal. And that case thickness at only 11 millimeters makes it wear very, very comfortable. It does have drilled end links, so it's very easy to change out the spring bars or change out the straps. Uh, if you want to put any type of different strap on it, it is a screw down case back on it. And it just has the information on Sanjin instruments and it's a stainless steel. And it just gives you the more details, water resistance, and it has the, the, uh, the serial number on the watch on there. Um, setting the GMT is very, very easy. Because there is no date, you just unscrew this, pop it out to the first position. Let's see if I can do it here. First position. And then you're going to turn it counterclockwise. And then you're going to set it to whatever time zone you're tracking. Uh, and in this case, because uh, we have family in California, uh, we're still on a daylight savings. So I keep it right now um, 1700. But when daylight savings changes to them, I will uh, drop it back to, um, whoops, 1700. I will drop it back to 1600. I'll drop about to, to 1700 and then you pull out one more to set the time and then it is a uh, hacking so the, the seconds hand stops and then you put it back in and then you and then it'll take off you do not have um you do not have a date window so you don't have to mess with the date so that's nice not having to mess with that As I said, you don't have a date window, so you have to mess with that. The loom is excellent. The legibility is excellent. Um, the Probably the only two quirks I have that I, I, I wish it would have been an automatic uh, instead of a quartz, because uh, automatic would have been definitely more to the time period. But I get it. They're doing it as a modern timepiece. And then my other one, as you can see, the second hands um, do not hit directly on uh, the seconds. It'll, it'll kind of get close in here. And then when it gets over to here, it's, it's, it's definitely off. See, it's on there, and then it'll start being off going around. And it's one of those things that, see there, now it's kind of off. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Is it is it a deal breaker? No. Is it definitely my OCD? Absolutely. But, you know, that's just my only complaint about quartz. But other than that, it is definitely a grab-and-go watch. It's excellent, excellent watch. Um, I will give you some wrist shots. They give you nice size spring bars. They're nice and thick, so they're not going to come off. Uh, no com no major nitpicks or complaints about this watch that would make me not purchase this again if uh, if I had the option to do that. Uh, everything is perfect. So why don't um, I go ahead and flip off the lights and let's do a loom check on this real quick. Okay, there is the loom. You can see it's absolutely perfect. Super Luminova, crisp, clean, very legible. You can see the seconds tip is loomed. The hands are loomed. The indices are loomed. The numerals are loomed. And the GMT hand is loomed. Uh, it It is it, just... The loom is perfect. It lasts a good time. They did an outstanding job uh, on the loom. I have to have zero, zero, zero complaints about the loom. Uh, just fantastic. So uh, again, you cannot go wrong with this loom. So let's go ahead and put the lights back on. This watch uh, will set you back just under $500 uh, on their website. They ship very quickly when they're in. Like I said, they only make so many. And then they put, they'll send out an announcement when you're on their list that they're dropping. And you better get on there and get them because they go as soon as, soon as they hit. Uh, I'll go ahead and pop this on the wrist so you can take some wrist shots. I'm not going to do a quick wrist shot check. I have my tutor on. I do that enough. But the only part of the difference with this one is I have it on a Hawk Rigger um, uh, FXD style pass single pass-through strap. And I, of all the pass-through straps I have for this watch, this one, the NDC strap, and the one from Watches of Espionage, this Hawk Rigger one wears the best and is the most comfortable. Let me know if you want me to do a review of those three straps for this specific watch. I don't know if there's enough interest in that, but if there is, tell me in the comments and I will do a review on these three different straps for that one. But let me go ahead and pop this off and then we will uh, take a look at this on the wrist shots. Okay, here it is on my six and a quarter inch wrist. You can see it wears absolutely perfect. That 48 millimeter uh, lug width is phenomenal. It is extremely comfortable especially on this, uh, this nylon hook and loop strap from Watches of Espionage. Uh, it's just unbelievably comfortable. It looks really good. There's absolutely, uh, you don't feel the weight at all. Extremely reliable. Uh, 39 to 40 millimeters seems to like be that perfect sweet spot for me. Uh, I can go up to a 44, but 39, 40, 41 right in there is perfect. Anything below 39, I just it's just too small for me. I think it's an outstanding watch. Um, You've always seen some photos I've thrown up of the different, you know, the different uh, pictures of it and the different straps. So I would definitely say that this is a watch um, that if you like military-inspired watches, you like backing veteran-owned companies, uh, you like things that are unique and different, 
then I would definitely tell you to go check out Sanjin Instruments. Okay, you can see by looking at this watch, this is not a dive watch by any means whatsoever. There's no type of bezel. There's no you know timing bezel, any of that. This is more of a true you know old school field watch uh, that they've done an excellent job on. Um, but it is 200 meters water resistant. So unlike a lot of field watches that are only 50 uh, 50 meters uh, water resistance, they did right by this by making it. Uh, 200 meter water resistance. So you could definitely dive with this one. You can definitely go in the water. You, get, you, you know you're not gonna have any issues. The AR coating is very prominent. You can see the blue from the AR coating underneath. Uh, it definitely stands out. Some people like that, some people don't. I think it adds a lot of character to it. I like it personally. Uh, you can see that dome sapphire. Uh, you can still see how the nice legibility is still there, the readability. It's just an excellent piece of glass. Um, I can see why it takes them time because I think they put a lot of effort into the manufacturing and quality of the watch versus pushing out a lot of quantity, uh, which is awesome. And they do have a portion on the thing that's, uh, that you have, uh, they can do unit watches. It's this one, I think the Kinetic and one other one, I can't remember which one they name it, but you can get unit uh, made uh, special watches uh, and have them commission them. And a lot of units will do that, um, law enforcement units, government, uh, uh, police agencies, military. And they'll usually either put, you know, they'll help you custom design it, like with the logo uh, or the unit patch or the logo for your unit on it. And there'll be some kind of engraving on the back. So Sanjin also will do um, unit-based specific watches. I know Omega does it, Bremen does it, Tudor does it. I don't know if there's any, I don't know if Rolex does it or not. But it is not uncommon to see um, among a lot of different units uh, where they will get uh, organizational or unit specific made watches done, and then they'll have them commissioned, and then the individual, the individual uh, soldier, sailor, whoever, marine, whoever, can buy them, and they will be unit specific to them, and you had to be with that unit to get that watch. So I thought that was pretty cool. So without further ado. I'm going to jump back over and get away from the bench here and wrap up my final thoughts on the Sanjin Instruments Para Overlord GMT and all its absolute coolness. Definitely go check out Sanjin Instruments. All right, there you go, folks. There is a up-close, uh, in-depth review of the Sanjin Instruments Para Overlord GMT and all its absolute coolness. So if you're definitely into really cool military-inspired watches, purpose-built military watches, not only for military, but police, firefighters, EMTs, EOD, special ops, uh, and just the everyday adventure out there who just really wants a nice, good, solid, rugged watch, and you want to do it from a veteran-owned company that has the combat experience and knows what we need in a type of watch, the Sanjin Instruments is definitely one you need to check out. Um, go on YouTube, and you can check out the Battle of Sanjin, which was a big, major, heavy, heavy battle. Uh, and I think it was in 2010 in Helen Province in the San Jan River Valley area that the Marines were heavily involved in uh, a lot of big units. So there was a there's a whole thing on this. Uh, I think it's on Wikipedia too, the Battle of San Jan. Uh, I guess everybody will feel that their area is kinetic there. I was in I was in the Mirabad Valley area. And it was called IED Alley for a reason. We dealt with IEDs out the wazoo. It was, it was just like nonstop IEDs. So every area dealt thing. But uh, when they just say kinetic, they just mean there was a lot of bullets flying constantly and hard. So Check it out. It's a really interesting story. It's really good. I'm sure there's some YouTube videos on it. Check out Sanjin uh, on the internet and their watches. Get on their mailing list. Um, I don't have any affiliation with them. I don't have any sponsorship by them. I had to pay full price for this watch. I was just ecstatic to be able to get it. That's why I noticed when I read a lot of comments uh, on their Instagram page is a lot of people, when they do the drop, they'll pop in. And I don't know the name of the company they use that handles their um, ordering process, but apparently uh, there's so many people try to order that someone will have it in their um, checkout box and it'll get snatched out of that and dropped into someone else's because they process their order fast because they, I guess there's only, you know, they only make so many of the watches. I think it's like three or 400 of, of the para overlord. I think it was maybe, it's, I don't remember the exact number. Uh, and then when they're gone, they're gone. So if you hit that order button faster than someone else, they actually would get it snatched out of their cart and into yours. So I lucked out very happy. I've probably been waiting about a year and a half, two years uh, to get one of these. I'm ecstatic that I got it. So check it out. Let me know what you think. Put it down in the comments. Also, let me know down in the uh, comments if you'd like me to do a review of the three different pass-through straps by uh, Watch of Espionage, NDC uh, straps, and Hawk Rigger straps, and what I think is a, probably the best of the three for a, uh, a 
a Tudor FXD either for the SEAL version or the Marine National version. Um, let me know what you think of the video. Let me know other watches you want to view. As again, always, thank you, thank you, thank you from this whole Combat Veterans heart. Uh, we continue to grow and it's all because of your support and we can't do it without you. So as always, hit that like button, hit that thumbs up. It helps put out the algorithm. And remember to always be kind to others as you don't know the battles they're fighting. You stay safe, you have a great weekend. And until the next video, I'm diving into watches and I'm out.